I need coffee. I went to work yesterday. This this guy comes up to me. He's like, you know what's so strange about life? And I'm like, I'm all he is. I'm like, this guy's going to hit me with some Jamaican guy. He's going to hit me with something deep, you know? You know how sometimes these island guys can come up to you and hit you with like a, one of these... Like a, like a deep philosophy or something like that, you know? He comes up to me, he goes, man, he goes, that's how he talks. I hate to tell you, quintessential Jamaican. That's how he talks. What do you want me to tell you? He goes, man, how come you drive in a parkway and you park in a driveway? That doesn't make any sense, man. I swear to God. I, swear, I just kept on walking. I felt like saying to what, what did you get, like, the, the joke section? In, in the Highlights magazine in the doctor's office? <sighs> he meant it. Like, this was a real thing. This was a real thing he was thinking about. I felt like stopping right there. We make the same pay. You get paid the same amount I get paid. I'm out. I'm out right now. <sighs> then I had a dream. I had a dream that I went to. You ever hear somebody talk about their dreams to you? Like the dreams that they have? And you're like, ah, oh, like your eyes glaze over. You can't even stay awake. I'm about to tell you about my dream. You ready for it? I went to go get a loan from the bank. I don't know why. You know how you're in a dream and it's like you're doing something or you're somewhere and you're like, oh yeah, this is this. I don't know how to explain it. Like you're in a strange house, but in your mind you're like, this is my house. This is where I live. Sometimes you go to open the cupboards and you're like, they're bare. I don't know, guys, the cupboards are bare today. I went to go get a loan from a bank that was inside an Old Navy. That's right. The, the, bank, the, the store was half Old Navy, half a bank. And I'm walking in and I'm like, does anybody really, does anybody care about, uh, you know, I don't know a bit, how to do business these days. I had all these like teeny boppers, like, like who shops at Old Navy anymore? I'm like, why am I in an Old Navy? And I'm in a bank. Oh, so these like teeny boppers are running around shopping and I'm like trying to like be serious talking to a, a loan officer who, by the way, and, and the bank was like, it was like a post-apocalyptic bank. The printer was like leaning over. Everything was destroyed. The carpets had like perlas all over it. I said, why am I even here? How? Why? They, I should be lending these people money. The, the bank was like the sign was crooked. I, I remember everything I looked at was wrong. And I just said, just get out of here. You're in an old Navy bank. I don't know. I don't know. This is why when people tell you about their dreams, you just walk away. You just walk away. I need coffee. I just want that flying dream. How come I... I want to know something right now. I have this reoccurring dream. It's always in the same spot. You know, it's funny. When I go to my parents' house, there's a puddle outside. Okay? There's a... We call it the triangle because it's where, where one road I, 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 veers off into two. It's a fork in the road. And there's a puddle right there. And I think why I keep on having this reoccurring dream is you understand when I had my BMX. One of the most wonderful things like you could do when you first start riding a bike is drive your bike through a puddle. Oh, I don't know. I, I know now because that's all my son wants to do. Ride through puddles and get dirty. That's right. And then I have to put up with Gestapo when I get home. Why are his pants dirty? Why are his socks dirty? Why are his shoes dirty? He's a five-year-old kid. That's why. And then we used to take our bikes when we go to the puddle. That was the puddle. We go to the puddle, and the puddle even had an island. Like, like the asphalt is all screwy there. 
So it was like a puddle of water and then a, and a strip of like island in the middle. So you go to the dry strip in the middle, get off your bike. You're like, safe. I'm on base. Everything was base. And then you take your bike on the puddle, you lean it off the training wheels, and you turn the crank, and it would make a rooster tail. Oh yeah, you did, it was it was a rooster tail. You were bolt racing now. You understand? Imagination gone wild. Who could do the biggest rooster tail? There wasn't much going on back then, guys. I have to let you know right now. We didn't have Amazon Prime. Oh, my head's going to explode. I remember we had this guy, Eric Fairchild. Rest his soul. Rest his soul. Long gone. Guys like this don't live. Do you understand? I was walking home from school one day. You want to know how this guy terrorized me? I probably told this story before, but guess what? The Cobbett's a bear. I was walking home from school. I don't know, kindergarten, first grade. He comes running up to me, grabs me by the ankles, grabs me by both ankles and just goes like this. <laughs> and flips me upside down. The velocity at which my head was careening toward the asphalt one wrong move on his part, and I got news for you, he wasn't exactly working for Cirque du Soleil. He would have bashed my head into tatters all over the floor. I mean, brain coming out of my ear and everything. You have no idea. And he flipped me upside down into the air and started shaking me. Like, what the fuck is going on here? And I put me down, I'm screaming like, I don't know, a baby wild boar in a vice. At the top of my lungs, running home. And then how do you explain that to your mother? How do you explain? Man, man, put me upside down, man! My mother's like... <sighs> my mother's watching Phil Donahue. You put me upside down? Huh? What do you want, peanut butter sandwich? Yeah, I want a peanut butter sandwich. Peanut butter and jelly. I mean, it solves everything. What are you going to do? I'm going I'm to go put on gummy bears now. That's right. I'm going to go watch go after school, after school cartoon. Boy, oh boy, the fucking TV knew how to get you, right? After school cartoon. This type of thing. Tailspin. Gummy bears, Thundercats, they knew how to get you, right after school. <sighs> what do you want from me? Yeah, that's great. Flip, flip me upside down. Anyhow, this guy used to have a speedboat. A young man with a speedboat. It's like the greatest thing on planet Earth. You know, I love old guys driving around in Corvettes. It's such a shame that guys start to get money as they get older. And they can't... The best thing to be is young and rich. Do you understand? But not young and like drug money rich. Not rich like you had everything all your life. This is, this is the secret formula to life. At the age of like... Oh, I don't know. 17, 18, right when you can get your license, you come into a windfall of money. You had nothing your whole life. Because this guy had nothing growing up. Do you understand? And all of a sudden, I don't know what he was doing. Uh, maybe selling cocaine by the kilo. He's got the fastest speedboat in town now. And you got to understand, back in the day, it was a it was a superboat. What, 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 what did they have? What were the speedboats back at? Listen, there's nothing like a, a 70s, 80s speedboat. Do you understand? This is a recipe for an awesome speedboat. It's got to have heavy metal flake. Okay? I remember the speedboat was blue, metal flake. Ay, ay, ay. With a huge mercury hanging off the back. 
Oh my god. Remember remember it was like uh, it was like 150 horsepower of mercury. Unheard of back in the 80s. Do you understand? You couldn't get a car with 150 horsepower. He had 150 horsepower of Merc hanging off the back. Oh my god. So what he would do is we uh, we would be down there fishing. Yeah. And he'd come down with a, with a speedboat and he'd trim the motor up all the way and he'd start spraying us with the engine. <laughs> Shooting a rooster tail at you, like this type of thing. Or he'd, he'd drive at you like 90 miles an hour and then turn the boat and it would create a tidal wave. This type of thing. You understand? And it was like, oh, there's Eric. There's Eric again, having the time of his life. Always with a broad, you understand, like a blonde hair blowing, blonde hair sunglasses, and big tits. <sighs> and the old school speedboats had that, had that foot, like a gas pedal. Uh. Remember that? It was like a, called a hot foot. Right? It was shaped like a foot, like with toes. I don't know what to tell you. So that was the thing. You'd go down there and you'd basically tear up the environment. Because I, I, I love everybody so environmental. Yes. We, we have, you have to preserve the marshlands. This is the marshlands. You, you know what the marshlands is? It's nature's cesspool. That's right. Go, go walk around the marshlands for a couple days and you realize, uh, no need to preserve. That's right. No, no need to preserve. Don't pull your trash here. Cause that's what it is. I, I love you get a biologist in, in, in a mar you get a biologist anywhere. All right. I got, I knew a guy who was into horticulture. He, he's the type of guy that would pick up soil and be like, Oh, the microorganisms. And there's a whole ecology in the palm of my hand that like, it's great, pal. It's a fucking, it's dirt. All right. So why don't you throw it back down and wash your hands? Oh, you get a scientist in the marshlands. Oh, this, this is the most important ecosystem on planet earth. You know, this, this is why you got to shut down schools. Yeah. I. Oh, really? That's great. Can I dump my antifreeze here now? Where am I going to put this antifreeze? I've had it. So it was always a big thing. We had a, a bird preserve across across from us. I saw a puff of smoke. This, this, I saw a puff of smoke in the sky the other day. I said, oh my God, a fire. And I, I thought to myself, when's the last time you saw a good fire? Remember, I, I don't know, for some reason, when we were kids in the 80s, there was a fire every day somewhere. You'd see a huge cloud of smoke. You'd be like, if something's burning, you hop on your BMX and you head over there. Yeah. This is like, you, you're like a, a journalist, like Paul Revere. You'd go see the fire, and then on the way back home, you'd tell all the neighbors about it. Hey, what happened out there? Oh, it was a fire. The flames, they were like 10 feet high. This type of thing. Oh, yeah? That's how it was. That's how you got the news, you understand? From a fucking, uh, a, a little shit on a bicycle. So across, across from us, we had the island, and it was a bird preserve, do you understand? And it was ritualistic that this, somebody set this fucker on fire every month. You know, I don't know what happened. People would go over there and just set the thing on fire. And then the fire department, and, and there was a whole canal around it, so it was like a moat. You, it was the greatest thing ever, because the firefighters couldn't get to it. Sometimes they'd be spraying water from across the canal. Oh, it was wonderful. There was nothing to do. There was nothing to do. It's like everybody was just getting drunk and then saying, you know, uh, I don't know. Let's set the island on fire. Let's let's make something happen this weekend. There's literally nothing to do. And then everybody would come out in the streets and they'd watch the fire. Wow, look at that. It's really burning, huh? Yeah. Oh, it was so exciting. It was so exciting. And then when the fire was over, it was so depressing. It's like this is the, this is it's over. It's depressing. It's over. When, when when's the next scheduled fire, guys? Huh? Can we get on that? 
What do we got? I remember me and Billy from my backyard, we would launch rockets onto the island trying to set it on fire. This is a nightmare for these birds. I don't know what kind of birds they had over there, but these birds, uh, it was a nightmare for them. It was like living in Israel. <laughs> I don't mean to laugh, but it was like, and we were Hezbollah. That's right. Just rockets flying over there. My Christ. What are you going to do? What are you going to fucking do? So then I come home from work and, uh, and I walk in the backyard and uh, there's a fucking uh, soccer ball. That's right. In my, in my hibiscus tree. I have two hibiscus trees next to my, uh, my fountain back there. The boy pissing fountain. There's a soccer ball in the tree. I, the, the temperature went like this. You understand? I got these kids, they play soccer next door. They use my fence as, as, uh, uh, it's, it's the goal. It's the goal. So when, I'm, when we're sitting relaxing in the backyard, bam, bam, the ball hits the fence. That's right. And then my wife yells at him. <laughs> I don't even yell at him. They're fucking kids. What are you gonna? What are you gonna start yelling? Because they're hitting the fence. I knew that fucking jerk off growing up. The guy, the guy that wanted his house pristine. You understand? That's the guy that when you get become a teenager, you bro the guy broke your ball so much that when you become a teenager, you come and you pour gasoline all over his flower beds. That's how it goes. Or motor oil. That's how it goes. So I tell my wife, I said, be careful how you yell at these kids. Because little kids turn into teenagers. That's right. That's right. And next thing you knew, the next thing you know, they're doing a fucking Dave Winfield on your mailbox. With a baseball bat. So watch what she doesn't get it. She does she's not she's not like American. Do you understand? You gotta be American to understand this. Like vengeance and uh, retaliation. This type of thing. Yes. We had Cookie. Where 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 I lived, we, we couldn't we couldn't hang out on the corner because Cookie would call the cops on us. Constantly. Constantly. Or come out. And tell us we're not going anywhere in life. You'll never be anything. Your father's a drunk. This time, they would, she would come out and say that type of shit to you. You know, she was cookie. She was cookie cunt. She was cunt of the neighborhood. Yeah. So what would happen? We'd set off fireworks on a, on a front lawn. That's right. A eight inch mortar right at the front of the house. We blew the storm door right off the house. You think I'm joking? It should, it should be logged somewhere. This, this stuff should be in the annals of wonderful retaliation history. You kidding me? Hose, stick the hose right in the vent pipe in the roof. Turn the, the garden hose on. That's all. That's all. This is wonderful, wonderful uh, retaliations. Be careful what you say to young kids. They grow up. And then you got a real problem. And then you're old. And they're like in their prime. And now you're scared shit of them. <laughs> Everything levels out in life. The playing field, it levels out. I mean, what do you want me to tell you? What do you want me to tell you? And firefighters, I got firefighters got their teeth pulled a long time ago. I listen. I I've heard all the stories about firefighters. My father told me how there was a liquor by this job that he was doing. There was a liquor store on fire. The firefighters unloaded about thirty cases of liquor from the back of the store before they even turned on the hoses. You understand this type of thing? This is back when the fire department had some teeth. Yeah. Oh, park your Cadillac in front of the fire hydrant. They would bash one window out, put the hose through, bash the other window out, drag the hose all the way through your car and connect it to the, the fire hydrant. Oh, it would happen all the time. Go ahead, block a fire hydrant. Now, now what happens is, that well, what happened the other day in New York? Somebody was parked in front of the fire hydrant or, or they would connect the, 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 the car to the fire truck and just yank it down the block. 
Yeah, it was like a bull elephant uh, attack. The fire truck yanking your car down the block. Now what happened? Somebody parked in fire in front of the fire hydrant. There was an apartment on fire. What did what did, the fire department can't do that anymore because you got you got uh, you got a you got a, a world full of cunts. They can't even move the car. So what happens? They got to call police impound to come move the car legitimately with a tow truck. And a little girl burned to death in the apartment because of that wasted time. <laughs> So there you have it. That's great. If I was the fire department, I stick the hose right in the exhaust pipe. Oh my God. I fill the engine to the gills. <laughs> hey, hey, Charlie, what do we do? Well, first, uh, first we take the, the ladder the hydraulic ladder, we put it right through the back windshield. No, do, get me the axe. Crack out the sunroof. They cra we crack out the sunroof. Get the hose. Fill the car up like an aquarium. <sighs> then you, have, you, you hooked up the chain to it. And then we pull it out. We pull it out into the middle of the traffic. That's all. Shove a banana in the in the exhaust pipe to cap everything off. You know that's all. He's out of here. That's right. I remember we had a fire once. We had a neighborhood fire. I this was this was the greatest the greatest thing I ever saw. It was a woman. She's outside screaming. My house is on fire. My house is on fire. The fire truck pulls up. Everybody could see like it was a kitchen fire. Do you understand? Like like a pot. And went off, so she had like a, uh, you could see from the door open, it was a kitchen fire. Very small fire. First thing they did, they a guy comes out, he's like four foot two. All right, they, they were like, the, the, the guy, they gave him a job, you know what I mean? He came in, I want to be a fire finder. He said, oh yeah? All right, uh, uh what are you going to do? Let's go to, uh, let's go to PetSmart. Let's see if we can find them a firefighter uniform that you would put on like, I don't know. Uh, a, a Yorkshire Terrier. Anyhow, this guy comes flying out of the out of the. I thought it was Chucky from the movies. We, he comes flying out with an axe. I said, "Oh my God!" They hired Chucky. <laughs> what the fuck is that guy's name? Chucky. He goes running at the house and he starts shattering all the windows in the house. <laughs> I was like, "What the fuck is going? What is he doing?" And he had to jump. To get at the windows. He's jumping and smashing the windows. I said, Jesus Christ. To let the smoke out of the house. <laughs> he went around bashing every window. It was like the happiest moment of his life. You understand? Then the lattice came out. I said, what is going on here? Why can't they just, I don't know, use the fire extinguisher that's under the sink to put out this fire? That's how small the fire was. Then they get out the ladders and they cl climb up on the roof with this huge fucking uh, gas saw. And they start cutting holes in the roof. <laughs> God! And again, I guess presumably to let the smoke out. And they, so they cut these enormous holes out of the roof and like there's no smoke coming out. I'm like, these, the firemen, basically what happens is, what they do is they're getting drunk at the firehouse. Let's face it. I, I don't... I don't blame them. I'd be doing the same thing. And now they're going to do drills, but on this lady's house. It's like, yeah, let's practice. Hey, hey, I, 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 hey, chief, can we, uh, what do we do? Uh, pull out the new saws. Let's see if they work. Cut a, cut, cut, cut a couple fucking holes in the roof over there, will you? You, uh, hey, uh, Hey, uh, uh, fucking short person, go crack out the windows. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he went, uh, that guy that broke the windows, he went home and he beat his wife that day. Yeah. He walked through the door, dinner wasn't ready, he beat the shit out of her. Well, he thought he was like everything to everybody that day. Yeah. Oh, kid, you kidding me? Just, uh, trust me, these guys go home, they start feeling like heroes and then they go home and beat up their wives. I know, I know what happens. 
I know what happens. Anyhow. Then she picked him up by the neck and body slammed him. <laughs> Anyhow. Yeah, so they cut holes in the roof and then the lady starts screaming, it's only a fire in the kitchen. <laughs> it's only the kitchen. <laughs> they destroy the house. Oh yeah. They kick the doors open. They're kicking doors down, this type of thing. Then they came in and they flooded the whole house. They flooded the whole house with hoses. And then it's funny because then they just leave. That's all. Goodbye. She's sitting there in her apron in tears. Her house is destroyed. What are you going to do? Callahan here. Reporting for duty. Oh, it's on already? Well, we'll turn it off, right? And we'll turn it on again. Scanning for crimes. Other than that, I go to pick up my son from school. Yeah. Oh, you got to see. Uh, my, my dog, you know, dogs are funny. Dogs are a lot smarter than we give them credit for. My dog senses when it's time to pick up my son from school. Because we walk down and we go, we walk and pick him up from school. So I go over to the drawer where the leash is and he starts losing his mind. Like the dog walk is like the most important part of his day. I, I figured that out. It's because he does nothing. You understand? The, he does absolutely nothing. So now this is his opportunity to do something. Get out in the neighborhood. Uh, you know, take an enormous shit and embarrass me. Basically. He said he could be outside the whole day. I let him out in the backyard. He could run around, take as many shits as he wants. But for some reason, when we go walking, that's when he has to take a shit. In front of somebody, by the way, somebody that I respect. So I get the leash and I always say the same thing. I say, choosy, choosy one walkie, choosy one walkie, choosy one walkie. And he jumps, uh, he jumps up almost to my chest. He's so excited. These are like Michael Jordan foul line jumps, like for a dog. Like, I don't know where he gets it. He never jumps like this before, but when he knows he wants to, when we're going one walkie, choosy one walkie, one walkie von choosy, this type of thing. You talk like an idiot with a dog, especially when nobody's around. Oh my God. When I come home from work, Rita falls on my foot. Yes. Oh, that's right. Falls on my foot and then does a, a triple lutz in the air. And uh, nice dismount. I walk through the door. I go, chanchu, 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 chanchu. And he loses his mind. Pee's coming out. He's so excited. He's running in circles. He's he's doing donuts, burnouts on the floor. Chanchu, 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 chanchu. That's it. You talk like a moron. I said, if anybody had a, a hidden camera here, I would be the laughing stock of uh, the, the entire world. And then I flip him over on his back and I give him belly rub, belly rub, be da, be do, belly rub, be da, be do. And I sing that in his ear and he goes, <laughs> Belly rubby dubby do. I smell the pussies. I smell the pussies. They smell like popcorn chips. They smell like popcorn chips. They smell the pussies. They smell the pussies. You understand? This is like madhouse stuff. It's like, take them away. Take them away.
Anyhow. I don't rub his balls, though. I leave that to my wife. My kid rubs his balls, too. I'm like, what are you, Tani, what are you doing? He likes it, Dad. Uh, yeah, well, guess what? So do I, but you're not rubbing my balls. Everybody's out of here. So anyway, I start walking the dog down to the school. And, uh, and here comes Cooper. Cooper, I see Cooper in the distance. We got a, we got a two, we got a road separated by a narrow trim of grass and then another road. It's Hawkins here in Copeg. And Cooper's on the same side as us. So I go intentionally across the road because the last time we encountered Cooper, we got into a Michael Vick dog fight that was out of control. I don't even know how to explain this fight to you. I've already talked about it on the show. It was a vicious attack fight. I've never seen this happen in my life between these two dogs. So I said, okay, let me, I, hey, I, let me do the logic equation here. Uh, dog fight plus dog fight equals let me get the fuck away from Cooper. So I go on the other side of the road. I stay away from Cooper. What do you think happens as I'm walking? Over comes Mr. Mr. Cooper, the old man, and Cooper walking directly at me. And I'm like, ha ha, what is he doing? Ha ha, hi, how are you? And he comes over with the dog to come meet my dog. I'm like, what are you, what do you have, what did you forget? You got Alzheimer's? Remember how our dogs got into a vicious fight and I was the one in the middle of it trying to break it up and you were just sitting there staring at me with a smile on your face like nothing happened? He's look, well, our dogs are viciously attacking each other and he's like this. No, that's a, like reactionless. And then I finally break it up. My dog runs down the block and, he's, and I'm like, ah, see you later. He's like, all right, I'll see you around. Like what? He starts coming at me. And I just start walking at like, I don't know, speed walker pace. And I was just like, ah, have a good day. I got to escape this guy. My dog's going bananas because he knows what's going to happen. And Cooper's like tugging him on the end. He just, he just, I can see in his eyes. He just wants to tear my dog to shreds. Like, what is this fucking guy doing? You have dog, dog owners out there that are, they shouldn't own dogs. That's the bottom line. Then we go up, and we're just about to get to to mucus coming out of my nose at an alarming rate. All of a sudden, not oh, great. Well, I got a booger hanging out of my nose here. I'm trying to conduct the hit show with a booger hanging out of my nose. Anyhow, that, then we walk up to the next old guy because you're gonna discover something when you get a dog. It's a bunch of old people walking around that have nothing to do. And to be honest with you, I think the fight might be like the exciting part of their day. Like, it gives them something to talk about. So maybe they don't give a shit. But I got a wife. I can't bring home a dead dog. I got a wife I got to deal with. So here comes the next old guy, and it's Katie. And Katie's a schnauzer. I know all the dogs, neighborhood dogs' names, yes. I'd like Katie, but Katie's very uh, outgoing, and my dog is, after after the big dog fight we had, my dog's very shy. But Katie's very outgoing, and Katie loves me, and I love Katie. So Katie comes up to me, my dog stays away on the leash, but Katie comes up to me, and I start, I start petting Katie. Now, Katie's a girl. Katie's a girl. I, I assume Katie's a girl with a name like Katie, right? So I'm petting, petting Katie, and Katie's got her arms around my legs, like around my leg, like this, and I'm petting her. This, that, the other thing. But I'm also keeping an eye on my dog, because my dog's like all the way at the end of the leash, as far away from Katie as, as he can get. And I turn back, and Katie's humping my leg. I said, well, that's curious for a female dog. Do female dogs hump somebody's leg? And I'm looking down and I'm like, oh, look at that. And the dog has a death grip on my leg. Like, I feel like this dog is on the peck deck. 
basically on my leg. The dog is like this, squeezing my leg. And it's a little dog. I don't, and the guy's looking at the guy's. The old guy's looking at me like this. It's like, hey, 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 pal, hey, pal, can you do me a favor? Can you tell your dog to stop fucking me? Can we start there? Now I'm trying to like put not, <laughs> like push him off of me. This dog is in full like prison rail on my leg. I don't even know how to describe it. It's like I. What was this dog in the Navy? Just got off the boat? I can't get the dog off of me. And the owner's just, these old guys, they just sit there. He's, he's like, like nothing's going on. And the crossing guard is looking and like laughing. And I'm looking at her. I'm like, I, 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 I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Then I literally had to put my hand on the dog's chest, like in the dog's chest and Yank it off of me. Like, cause I didn't want to do it in front of the owner because I uh, it's almost abusive to the dog. And I was like, I, I got to go. See you around. See you around. Next time I see Katie, I'll bring a box of condoms. Yeah. It's unbelievable what you got to deal with out there. And then as I'm walking my... The crossing guard's got to stop track. I, I almost feel like, listen, I, I, I feel like saying to the crossing guard, honey, I'm, I'm a fucking cunt hair away from 45 years old, okay? I don't need you to stop traffic for me to walk across the street. I can walk across the fucking street. So she's got to stop traffic from a mile away when she sees me. So I'm like, ah, now I got to rush. Now I got to rush. Now I can do, normally just walk, but she's got to stop traffic, like... Like half a block away. So now I feel, now people are waiting. So now I feel obligated to speed up. I'm like, what is going on here? I get halfway across the road and I feel tension on the leash. I turn around and my dog decides to take a shit in the middle of the road. I turn around, I'm like, I gotta tell you right now, I'm not into abusing dogs, but I just, what I did was I took the leash and I held it by my side and I just started walking. It was like a truck pull at this point. Do you understand? I just started walking and the dog was dragging on the floor in shit position. And basically, uh, it was like dragging a pastry bag across the street full of shit. It basically laid a pipe of shit across the street. And then I had to wait on the other side. We get to the other side and he finishes. For some reason, at the end of his shit, liquid's gotta bubble out. That's right, so he does a solid shit and then it's capped off by a, like a liquid lava shit pop that comes out at the end. Oh, it's great. It's wonderful. You, you, you haven't been there? You haven't seen the show? It's fantastic. Yeah, the bubble pop is shit at the end. And now there's a pipeline of shit going across. In segments. It's almost like, I don't know, how would you say? Like, a, like the lane, the dotted line of a lane of a road of shit in the road. So now I'm not going to hold up traffic anymore. I get to the other side. My dog's still shitting. The cars go across, run over some of the shit because they're going back and forth, run over some of the shit. So now the crossing guard's looking at me like, are you kidding me? You just shitted up the whole area that I have to work. And I'm like, I, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do at this point. I got my little bag of shit, my shit bag. That, you know, it's purple, by the way. We have pink ones and purple ones, and they have pawsies on them. So I put the purple shit bag on my hand, and now I'm going around scraping shit off the floor. And basically, uh, I'm basically uh, doing a big uh, Vincent Van Gogh of shit all over the floor. Because now I'm wiping, and there's more surface area, and the shit smells coming up.
We're 41 minutes in here. Guys, we gotta get to a package. I don't know, we gotta do something. We gotta do something. I, I, I understand you come here for video games. I understand. There's a lot of guys doing video games. Hey, tune out. Get out of here. Uh, there's a lot of great content out there. Uh, a shoot 'em up junkie. Shmup junkie. All right, great channel. Go check him out. He just did a whole thing on uh, PC Engine history. Go look at it. Two parts. Two parts. I felt like this is the problem with doing two parters on YouTube. First part gets a million views. Second part, it's like everybody like loses interest. Nobody watches. Two part series are like that's like the death of a video right there. Shoot 'em up, junkie. The guy's on fire. Okay, he's on fire. His uh, his editing is on. He knows shooters like nobody else. And he makes beautiful videos that are severely underviewed. They're severely underviewed. Everybody here, go check out Shoot 'em Up Junkie. I, I recommend it highly. Okay? And the guy is, is hammering it. Do you understand? He's hammering it. And I don't want to see him get burnt out. Because he's working hard. You can tell from his videos, he's working so hard. And, he's, and his viewership is not where it's supposed to be. He's supposed to have a lot more subscribers. That's what I'm trying to tell you. He's putting in the work. And he really deserves it. So please, check out Shoot 'em Up Junkie. I've been wanting to talk about his channel for a while. I really enjoy it. And you'll learn something from him. Because he's a shooter aficionado. Every kind of shooter you can imagine. Very interesting channel. Highly entertaining. Funny guy, too. So, you know. There you go. If you want video games, if you want video games, you go check him out. You, hey, you want assholery? Let's stick around. Stick around. That's right. For Johnny Blade. Oh, Johnny Blade's been on lately. She hasn't failed. We took her out of the case, and now she's just where she has to be. Let's face it. Here's one coming from Alan, friend of the show, Alan. Yes, from... Uh, from Wisconsin, WI, where they have cheese. Speaking of cheese, all right, guys. Is that Wisconsin? I want to go to Wisconsin so badly. I, I hear it's a beautiful state. this wow all right all right dear bedhead congrats on the ps2 and ps4 videos thank you uh even if they're fucking you tender on the ps4 one yeah well the ps4 one's up to uh i don't know uh 2.2 million 2.3 million views now yes and a month into the video they decided to give me a copyright strike. Oh, isn't that convenient? Yeah, so my most wildly successful video that I ever made gets a copyright strike a month in. Why? Because I used royalty-free music. Oh, God. I, you want me to have an aneurysm right now? I used royalty-free music, but then there's a rapper somewhere, some fucking talentless rapper. I watched this video. It sucks who used that royalty-free music and then claimed it. I don't know how that's possible. So then I got a copyright strike from his label, record label. And then YouTube gave me a copyright strike. And when I tried to fight it, this is the thing, you try to fight it and you're dealing with bots. You're not dealing with people. So nobody really sees what's going on. So the YouTube bot just says, uh, it's a copyright strike because somebody has claimed it, demonetized, and then you can't fight it. You cannot fight it. So I'd love to tell you what the what what the revenue would be on a, a video that has 2.3 million videos. It would be nice. 
it would be nice. But not for me. No, not for me. Because I can't talk to human beings. Any human being would say, oh, I see what's going on here. This is fraudulent. It was royalty free before this guy claimed it. The dates on the videos will tell you, you can't do that. You can't do that. That's right. So I'll take the fucking. I'll take the fucking. Don't worry, YouTube. I'm used to it. I'm used to taking the fucking. Thank you. Thank you for the fucking, YouTube, because I don't get enough fucking around here. <sighs> I had a game ready to send for a while it busted the list, but your email sadly showed me you already had it. Last I saw, when you pulled out the list, you didn't have it, but oh well. I am moving from Wisconsin back to the home state of North Dakota. I'm only bringing back what I can fit in my car, so I decided to give you a few things to lighten the load. I have a game I will be pre-ordering for you once I move back in three weeks. Wow. To go from Wisconsin to North Dakota, one gorgeous state to another. Am I wrong? Am I wrong? Go look at pictures. I think you will really enjoy it. Ba 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 ba. I'll do the bop bop. Hope you enjoy the, the few things I sent. I hope your family is well. P.S. Bop bop. Beep. Whoop beep, beep. Bop bop. Okay. Those are kind of spoilers. So I don't like to talk about those. What the heck? Whoa. Jesus. This is heavy. This is heavy right here. Oh, no, you didn't, buddy. Oh, no. Guy, you can't do this to me. You can't do this to me. No, 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 oh, no, 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 Oh, dark chocolate, sea salt, caramel. I want to know who the prick scumbag is that puts salt, chocolate, and caramel together. And pretzels, they're doing it around pretzels now. Ah. <sighs> this is why the, this is why the, the Taliban wants us dead. By the way, it's true. If, it, it's for this right here. Oh, look at this. Oh yeah, <laughs> Jesus Christ! It's the bottle is plastic. You ever walk by an empty lot and you see an empty one of these there? You're like, oh boy, somebody had a party. Where's the load rag? The load wet the rags not far away. Yeah. Like, like, what do you do as a bum? Is it, like, if you're a bum, what do you do? Just like walk, look for change, and look at the, listen to this lifestyle. By the way, you think? Let, let me tell you something right now. You think bums got it bad? They get some spare change. They walk into a liquor store. What do you pay for this? I don't know. A couple bucks, right? You tell people you know about your sad life. Maybe they, th maybe some idiot throws you a buck or two. You go and you get a bottle of booze. I don't know. Maybe you go go get a. You got a couple of porn rags, you know, tucked away in your overcoat, and then you go into a, a, an empty lot somewhere and you drink all night and 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 jerk off. I mean, this is a fucking great time. No, all right. I guess it's not for everybody. Oh boy. Oh my God! What are what are these? What are these? What are these? Fudge brownie M and M's. Oh my! God. Oh oh no! You didn't. Oh God! Oh God! Ishka, Ishka, caramel egg. Oh oh God! You don't understand. Oh, what this is? Oh, Cadbury caramel egg. 
It's something I can't resist. Cadbury eggs during Easter time. I could eat like five or six. You know, you know how some people say, uh, if you shouldn't eat all that candy, you're gonna get a stomach ache. Never happened in my life. Never got a stomach ache from eating candy. Until I had like a half dozen Cadbury eggs. Then I got a stomach ache. <laughs> Cadbury eggs are the antithesis of like health, fitness, and diet. A Cadbury egg is like, is like a uh, obese bomb. It's like a little obese bomb. You understand? You want to get fat? Eat Cadbury eggs. God almighty. And then he hooks us up. Jesus, does he hook us up. Alan, for Christ's sakes, he hooks us up with the, yes, with the Dr. Squatch uh bar soap this stuff is amazing cold brew cleanse ah yeah yeah freedom fresh ah, i wish you could be here ah they're so good they are so good mars bar ah oh. ah it's funny because i i shower with my son i don't know if i should be reporting that but i do He's five. I love the people. Uh, uh, never mind. I shower with my son, and sometimes when I use these, I drop the soap. And as I'm telling you right now, as I go down, I'm like keeping an eye on him. You never know. These kids. That's all I need is a five-year-old to mount me. You know? What is he going to do? Jump in the air? <laughs> you never know these days. With the internet, these kids learn fast. I'm like, can we stop with the showers together already? What's the cutoff point? What's the cutoff point? He went to throw a cup of water at me the other day because we were having like water fights in the shower. Like I, I use my hand like this. I fill it with water. And the, the other day I'm filling my hands with water and he jumped and he hit my hand and I went like this and like slapped myself with the water. Oh my God. He, the laughter, the giddy laughter that came out of his mouth, it was worth it. It was worth it. He thought that was the funniest thing of all time. And I can't blame him. He got the best of the dad, right? Well, guess what? So we started having water fights. Then he took a cup of water, because we bring like a little cup, little plastic cup into there, so he could fill it with water. And you know, we do we do artwork on the on the glass of the shower, and then he throw that's the eraser. We we play tic-tac-toe. <sighs> The best thing, if you have kids, the best thing you can have is glass shower doors. You draw, we do mathematics on the shower door. Oh, yeah, it's fantastic. We do spell words, you know, and then you, you, you erase it, and then it fogs up, and then you spell more. It's the greatest thing ever. Glass doors in your shower. It's the greatest teaching thing I think a kid could have. I think he learns more when we're in the shower than, you know. He told his teacher, he goes, she goes, where'd you learn to spell so good? When I got naked with my dad, dad. How, why, 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 what? Yeah. And then, and then I had a, a cup of water and I went to splash him with it and I hit him right in the balls. Yeah, that was nice. That was nice. You ever get hit in the balls? Ladies, any ladies out there? I know there's like two watching. To get hit in the balls, I don't care about your whole uh, having a child. I love, I love anytime something painful happens. You men can't have anything painful for, happen to them. So, oh my God, babe, it hurts so bad. I had your son. You don't know pain. That they love to pull that one out. I I got this for you right now. If you you never got kicked in the balls before, I don't care about your childbirth. I really don't. There's a there's a feeling that goes into your stuff when you get hit in the balls. It doesn't even have to be hard. It could be a light tap. You get sick to your stomach, and you have this echoing feeling in your stomach. I don't know how to explain it to you. It's like worst feeling on planet Earth. That's why I, I. That's why I don't do MMA fighting. I do ball kicks. That's right. That's how I train. I train for ball kicks. You want to learn? You want to learn to be a black belt in MMA? I'm, that's fantastic for you. But I'm. I am going in. I study. I'm a black belt in chimpanzee. That's right. That means I'm going to put my hand down your pants and I'm going to rip your balls off. You want to walk around like a black belt? Yeah. We, that's real dirty, pal. 
because I'm not a black belt. You want to walk around like a black belt? I'm tearing your balls off. So go for it. Come, come, come get some. Come get some. Um, and I'm biting. Ha! Ah, I'm biting. Yeah, we're not, we're not in, we're not in the UFC. There's no referee around. I'm biting your face. You want to get me in a, in a choke? I'm biting your arm. That's right. Like, like Night of the Living Dead. I'm taking chunks out. This biting, this hair pulling, you understand? I pull your hair out. You want to be a black belt? All the dirtiest shit you can think of. I'm putting fingers in your asshole. Yeah. You might like it. I'm telling you right now. I get into a fight with somebody. They try that black belt shit with me. And let's just say, I know, I know, every black belt out there. You have no idea. It's like taking candy from a baby. If I fought you, it's like taking care of the candy from a baby. Well, yeah, don't be so sure. Because this baby knows how to bite your balls, number one. Okay? I know how to pull your hair. You don't have hair? I, I don't know. I bite your ear off like Mike Tyson. This type of thing. I, I, I stick my fingers in your ears so you can't hear. Uh... I don't know. I put my hand in your mouth. What are you going to do? Oh, you, then you bite me, right? That hurts. I don't know. I take your nose off. I rip your nose off with my teeth. I'm going in for the kill. Do you understand? Not for the kill. I'm not killing anybody, but, you know. I, and then, and then, God forbid, I get you in a position. I pull down your pants. You're going to get humiliated. If there's people around, I'm going to pull down your pants. Look at his dick. Look at how small. Or it could backfire on me. Look at how huge that cock is. Jesus Christ, shouldn't have pulled those down. Now I'm embarrassed. Now now I feel like uh, 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 you know, a bunch of uh, little pieces of a whole human being. Yeah, look at the size of that thing. Jesus Christ. He's the real winner here. Even though I won the fight, he's the real winner. So, you know, all right, nothing to see here. It's over. I just got to put my finger up his ass. Just just for humiliation in front of the crowd. Yeah, take that. You want to have a big dick around here? All right. And thank you. Thank you for the pack of smokes now. Thank, thank you for introducing that back into my life, Alan. Thank you. Thank you. What are we going to do? How are we going to close out this one, huh? Because we're an hour in here. I don't know. What do you want me to tell you? Wow. Nothing like a morning cigarette, you know? Hey, que sera sera. Oh my God, and it's a beautiful day out today. What are you gonna do with your life, huh? Here we go. Man, man, we got a man, uh, Kopeg, shed on fire. Units, one, six, and four, seven, fight situation. Fight situation? What happened? I'm there. Front row seats. Where is it at? I'll get on my BMX right now. Units, one, six, and four, seven. I saw a video the other day. I saw a, I saw a video the other day. units one six and four seven. Cop tased the guy or shot him with the tape. units one six and four seven. Cop tased the guy. I'm talking! What channel is that coming from? And he used to back up one six and four seven. You're out of here. Yeah, cop tase the guy. The guy pulls pulls the taser thing out, but just like kind of drops it so the cop couldn't see it, and then he pretended like he was tased. He was doing this. And then the cop came over to arrest him, and the guy beat the shit out of the cop. I was like, Jesus Christ. Talk about thinking on your toes.
crazy stuff happening out there. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Wow, that's relaxing. You want to see my backyard? You want to see my garden? Why the fuck not, right? Let's kill the battery on this one. I'll show you the fountain. It's not on right now. I can override it. Hold on a second. Where's the timer? Where's the timer? Where's the timer? Where's the timer? Where's the There's my hibiscus trees. I'm very proud of this, by the way. I'll try not to step on any dog shit while we're at it. Isn't that pleasant? That's the only nice part of my yard. Yeah. Here we go, look at this. It's like ah, five in the morning here. What are you gonna do? My wife wants to take down the deck. That's great. There's our little bench that we never sit on. I want to sit and, and have coffee. My wife, I don't want to sit in the sun. All right, we ran the battery out, so we're going to do it like this. Guys, do you realize that you just tuned in to the greatest video game program in the history of human civilization? And you better believe that. With the 4K Vice! We'll see you next time. Guys, we are doing a knockout hit show on Patreon. I don't know if you realize that. I'm not sitting here trying to sell you something. I'm really not. Our Patreon show is it's tearing up right now. I think we're at we're 10. With 10 episodes in, my, it's but by this time, it's going to be more. 12? 11 or 12, something like that. It's a, a library, a wonderful archive to go in and watch. It's already, I mean, listen, uh, we're, do, we're doing like knocking out a half hour to 40 minutes, sometimes an hour, depending on how much I drink. You know, sometimes, sometimes we drink because... Uh, That's a beautiful fucking beer. <laughs> what am I going to tell you? Sometimes we drink, we get a little carried away, but that's good. That's good. I enjoy doing it. I really enjoy doing it. So, guys, we give you wonderful advices. That's all it is. We give you advices like this. And then my wife calls me about 10 minutes later and says, Babe, we got to buy Dogecoin. That's when I knew I'm out. I'm out. When my wife tells me we got to buy it, I said every other moron on planet Earth is thinking the same way. I'm out. Hey, look at that. I'm bleeding like a stuck pig. Yeah, that's what happens when you get old. You, 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 your skin turns into tissue paper. It's great. It's horrifying. Yeah. Every day is like a horror movie. Yeah. The slasher film. You didn't know? Getting old is great. The best thing I ever did in my life, and I want my son to say this at my funeral. There are certain things, I'm going to write a, a paper that I want my son to read at my funeral. And the one thing he's going to say is, greatest moment of my father's life is when he hired a landscaper. I know. I know. You're a winner. You come out a winner. So email me if you have a problem with your life. I want you to email me. Email me down below. We'll solve your problem. It's You'll be like, it's that simple? It's that simple. That's right. This is real life advices. I want you to know that right now. And it's a great honor for me to help you solve your problems. It really is. So email me. Put advices in the header below. It makes it easy for me to search. We do it on the fly. That's what makes it so much fun. Yes. And then your problems go away. Just like... 
you start anew. Oh, it's fantastic. Guys, thank you to all the Patreons. We're very grateful for the support. We really are. We'll see you next time.